So you will have two resources to watch video. You can watch from OBS, which is only on screen. But for the uh, Zoom record, it will be at the beginning of the class until the end of the class. So it might have a little different screen. Um, now, for today, we're going to import image and use as a reference inside that we can allow us to turn on and off and then we started to block out the geometry and then uh, for today we're gonna do on the cap first because easier than the bottom and uh, not the bottom the body because the body has a two extended three extended parts that a little uh, need a little more trick and if you look right now if I press 3 on my keyboard you don't have to do anything right now uh, it's display as a smooth it's not an actual geometry it's just a display trick on the screen however if you use Arno to rendering uh, to render this with smooth Arno will translate this into a smooth wireframe uh, um, to be able to render exactly like what we see on screen but my uh, software will not be able to do that okay so just only Arno and um, now let me isolate this explain a little bit so to build this we built in a low polygon and if you know this is any area when I press 3 if I wanted to make it look sharp like that I need to insert extra row of geometry this is edge look so that's the extra edge loop so what extra edge loop does is allow to maintain can you see I'm on uh, to on my keyboard to display a proxy with a smooth display can you see these are the proxies the original has two low two rolls this will stop continuity of the geometry in order to uh, when display as a smooth or you add smooth same here this one doesn't have a close roll to each other so uh, the OpenGL is mimic the continuity of the curve so that's why we can see is a little more rounded and the area that are not round sharp is mean we have more roll in there so that's the trick and um, now if we smooth this out with the actual geometry under mesh smooth here we go can you see it's maintained similar look of when we press 3 however this is still lower than the 3 display 3 display probably at double um, double subdivision this is just only one subdivision but if I change the smooth to 2 you will see it this is looks similar looks exactly like what we press smooth however the actual geometry uh, is become higher resolution okay so I'm gonna undo the smooth because we don't do that here we go so now how do I build this first I figured out the numbers of the uh, concave or the extrusion or the span and then figured out with the primitive object so I call, um, let's see, let me go to top view. Quick. Let me isolate it again. And I'll talk about isolation. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight span. Um, actually it's 16 because double, right? Two. So what, what we're going to do, we're going to figure it out how to build only partial of this object and then we can duplicate 
all like revolve all the uh, eight pair, and then we merge them together. So, and the technique is is subtract uh, is additive and subtractive modeling. Basically, you additive, you add surface, you subtract, and then you add it back. And um, some of the area we will have to do a manual action because it's only one part. And now. These sections are not eight sections, so we're going to have to end up with triangle at some area. This is not too bad. I mean, you could, do, you could try to do a uh, all quad, but it's unnecessary. Now, the quad and triangle, um, the difference is um, when you use quad, the deformation when you do animation, like deform the surface and stuff like that, it will give a better flow or continuity. Sorry, my mass is so small, it just keep coming off. And um, for triangle, the deformation will not look good because they don't have a double side. We have, I mean, you might see one side, but the way it bent, it bent based on the triangle, the section. So now, we're gonna start it to do this first for today. And hopefully we could finish. If we are not finished, it's okay. And um, now, for the um, this Friday will be work day. Okay, so I'll be here inside this room. I will uh, leave the um, Zoom on. So you, I will not check roll on Friday. Friday will try to give you a work time, and um, but. You are welcome to be here and welcome to ask me questions during the class time. Okay, so first, let's take a look at on our reference photo. And we're going to have to pick, let me go to my, let me copy that too. Okay. All right, so we're going to try to pick the photograph that clear and good on font and side view. That's all we need. So font and side. I could see that a 05 could be the one that we can use. Will not be exactly perfect um, that because of the photograph has been taken, taught, taking this one. Oh, 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 I can see. I forgot last year I downloaded this so that we don't, we use that just for looking at it. But this one we can use for tracing. So let's use this one better. And um, let me see. Yeah, perfect. So now, um, when I was mentioned, if you take your own photograph, what prob uh, the problem is this. There's a perspective on it. So now, if you use your cell phone, this is in the future reference when you wanted to take a re reference photo. You wanted to move your body or the camera far away from the subject, and then you zoom in really close. In that case, you create a narrow angle of the lens, you will get less distortion. So you will get more like similar to all the graphic view, but not exact because it won't flat, totally flat. Okay, so you're gonna use all of these photographs to see the detail. And while we're working on it, we will see it too. So now, um, I know some people at home may not have a uh, Adobe, Photoshop, if you have any other application, you can cut this half, but pretend that we don't. So we're going to use the whole image on left and right. It's a little weird because um, it doesn't have an option to, clop, uh, to crop it So in, in, uh, in Maya software. So um, maybe let me, let me try something. Oh. How about this? Just use the um, window preview, crop it. See if I can crop one of them. 
and then save as a copy we're gonna call font just font is fine and you're gonna save this inside project folder if you don't if you don't have a project folder which is the uh, weak one the one that we set up last section I have my so I'm gonna go to my project here we go and I'm gonna put it inside source images front the reason is uh, every time when you open Maya Maya will look into that folder and try to find the images that you are using for image plan so now I'm gonna close that down and I'm gonna double click again crop it again and okay and save now this one gonna call a side one you can name hydrant too I forgot to name that but I'm not doing it so we got that now this window you should leave it somewhere on your monitor if you have two monitor would be good if you don't that's fine so now come back to Maya software after you open it try to get used to it when you work with Maya software um, you open the application first you don't want to double click on the file on the zine project uh, zine file the reason is um, if you have image plan Maya will use whatever is right here under recent project as a reference locator to locate your file and if Maya can't see it it's gonna show blank show nothing so now we already had that project we click on set for people who didn't have the project window set up from last section you're gonna have to go to project window new navigate it to wherever you wanted to save name it and then click accept and then copy those file and put inside the source images folder of your new project for people who has it you set project because we don't want to create a new one we want to point where it is so navigate it to wherever you saved your file your project folder here we go and then just double click on the folder and now when you double click on the folder this is what I make a mistake sometimes it does that it select sorry guys <laughs> my mouse is too small this one it keep coming off Oop. so when highlight asset it will set the project directory inside asset folder and this is what I'm gonna get oops said there's no a uh, working space can you see dot mail so I have to choose set another location I have to go up highlight it click set here we go so now it's work and I'm gonna create a new scene okay so let's save the scene right away even though we don't have anything inside this scene how many of you forgot how to do navigation inside Maya people who are online are you doing okay uh, yeah. yeah okay so now save and I gonna call a uh, hydrant model something like that hydrant. fire hydrant how about zero one okay save as all right so now let's bring the image inside we want font image to be on front site to be on site and let's review a little bit when you look at on perspective view can you see right here the tripod global axis global axis the positive z indicate font negative z indicate back now the positive is when you see the icon direction that's the positive volumes why positive is top bottom is negative now x though if you pretend try to reorient your body and put your face 
to the positive z, x would be left, right? But Maya said it's right. Because somehow it's whoever wrote that program did that. So these are right side negative, it's left side instead. So when you build the object, try to focus on the orientation of the world space. You wanted to put the object face forward to the front view, not back view, because if you don't organize it, when you do animation, when you build separate object into separate scene, when you bring it, they're going to be opposite direction. So you wanted to organize them easier for you. So go back to font view. I'm going to maximize it. Under font view, on the view menu, viewport menu, there's a view menu, shading menu, lighting, lighting, show, render, renderer, and panels. Under view, you will see image plane. You can insert by choosing import image. And can you see? Maya know exactly where to look at. If you don't see your image right away, if you have to go up and navigate, you do it wrong. So let me cancel. If you don't see your image, go back, copy, a, uh, save the image that we were modified it and put inside source images folder. So let me review again class. Oh, not that one. E, where is my D? Let me show you the location. Here we go. And here we go. I put it inside source images folder, those two images. It has to be there. Now, when you're done for today, for people who are on ground, you need to back up the whole folder. All the files are okay, but if, let, let, let me try it. So I copy the whole folder. Hmm. Did I do copy? Okay. And then I go to my hard drive. And I just override that folder. So it will have a new file with me. When I come back, go to a different computer, I can copy this file, load it to the D drive, and then work directly from there. If you come back to the same computer, if you are at home, you, you don't have to back up like that. Okay. So now, font view. Image plane, import, and pick front. Will look like this. Okay. There we go. And let's see if I have a actual dimension. We can build the exactly same dimension also. I think I do have that dimension. So 32 inches, oh no, that's including, we just need right here, not on the bottom. 18, oh, oh yeah, 32 inches tall, 18 inches right here, and I do not know, it doesn't have a dimension here. So we could just do that and then we trace with the image so, so it will be 32 height from there now how do we deal with that though look at the grid right now by default is centimeter right so let's change the grid to an inch unit you go to window menu and setting slash preferences preference under set, uh, setting change linear centimeter to inch here we go and click save save your scene so that it save the workspace so it's memorize it the workspace is right here hold on let me go back that one under your project directory so basically you save this information that if you open the same file again, 
with that folder, you will get inch for the unit. So now, with the image plan, you can move them around by using move, even rotate, and scale. So let's do move only. Move a little bit. Now, right now it's five unit. Let's change the risk, uh, the scale of the image plan. So when you look at right here, we can try to do height 32. Oh wait, 32 might not be enough because 32 is right here, right? That one more. How about just do, let's, oh. Why I cannot, well, let's scale it guys, easier. Scale it, so these are the width and height. Let's just scale X and Y guys, X and Y. Um, now, move, you want to plant these to the base or the ground plane. And let's see, we want, to, how about this? Let's mention a little bit. Go to create menu, mensure tools, distance. From the distance, can you hold X key? X key is this, snap to grid. If I turn it on, these are turned on all the way. Now, can you turn this button off? Press X instead, hold it. Can you see? X on your keyboard. Is activate toggle on and off the snap to grid. The reason is we want this. First locator, make sure you use create, mensure tool distance. It's snap, can you see when you place it, it's snap to the grid. So now, second one, don't have to be perfect yet. Right now it's only 20, can you see 20? We want 32, 32 inches. So using move to grab your a uh, uh, locator might be hard to see the locator right there. Okay, and we want that to move up. So just turn on locator, and then just go ahead move until you get. I hold X key so that it keeps snapping. Now, when I click to the uh, toward to the positive X. The pivot point is still on the center, which is not a problem. So just make sure, go ahead, move only one direction until it's set 32. So that will be our height. So now come back to the uh, image plan and go ahead, scale. Now you can change your pivot point. Change it to the bottom right there. Don't have to be perfect snap, but maybe let's do it. Hold X key and then just move so that it snap and let it snap right to the bottom here. Press D again. Now when you scale this way, now I want to scale both X and Y. I grab this blue plane. Blue plane, blue plane is mean disable the X, uh, Z asset and move in the Z plane. So Z plane is Y and X. So now can you see, I can scale it. So basically just try to match the height, the tip. So now because we're using grid, so right there, right here. And I think I do a little too much, so it will be 4.7, see if it, yes, perfect. My somehow perfect 4.7. So, and we don't have to mensure on this side because this is blueprint that I download is proportionally correct. So we just mensure the height. That's it. And now go to side view. Oops, undo. There we go. Go to side view. We're gonna add another image there. Set first. It might crash. I give you a few minutes. Now on the side view, go to view menu again, image plan. Let me uh, maximize this view so that you can see a little better. 
image plan, import, there we go, and then put side view. Yes? How did you get it to be exactly 32? 32, oh, you hold X key so that you move and then it snaps to grid. Yeah. Basically, it's 32 grid. Right, I'm pulling down X, but it's not. Uh, oh, did you, which one are you gonna do? Scale or? Are, are you what? What are you doing? You're moving the uh, locator. Oh, okay. So select the locator. Right. Turn on move to, and your font view look like this, right? Yeah. So, and then you just hold X key and move only Y axis. So that is keep going up like this. Can you see? And then you just read when it hit to 32, you stop. Okay. That's it. Are you okay now? Uh, I'll, I'll get there. Okay, I'll, I'll wait a little bit. Hey guys, for people who are, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, I took a minute to get the image. Uh, how do you get the locator up again? Um, you select the locator, make sure it create distance, and choose distance too. Okay. Now the first locator, you will put it on the bottom. And then the second locator, anywhere, and then you will move them later. So try to use X key, hold X key so that it snap to the grid, like the, the, the crosshair on the grid. Front view, not the other view. Have to be on front. I'll wait a little bit, guys. So. So this is the locator. And when you move locator, if you look at on my screen, um, you hold X key and the, the pivot point will be on the center. We can change them, but don't need to do it for this time. Here we go. Now, for the side view, basically, you just try to scale the image uniformly and just move them. Make sure the base, uh, now you might need to move it further away for a little bit so that you can see the light of the, uh, if I turn on y, uh, grid, you will see it. Can you see? I have to turn back on. So I'm going to change the pivot point of the image plane so that they are snapped to the bottom part right there. You just use the bottom part to light up. And then press D again, and then scale until it is fit, the height. And make sure you grab the blue plan to scale. Blue plan. The blue plan icon is blue square. And let's see. It will be a little hard. Just try to get average and then look at on the volumes and change. Now, you can change your volumes on the channel box together by highlight it and drag like this. Let me deselect. Here we go. Can you? Uh oh. <laughs> Here we go. And then I think my is point 0.7. Oh no. This one is larger than the top one. So that will be 4.6. Now, can you see? A little off. We want it to touch. So it will be 4.65. Too much. So. 4.625, that's perfect. So basically, um, you just play around with the volumes, that's it. It's supposed to be exactly the same, but after we cut, somehow the trimming the pixel differently because it's read by, by pixel. There we go. So right now, when you look at on perspective view, we will look like this. You might get something like this too. So. Uh, can you watch a little bit and then I'll give you five minutes to finish. I want you to move the side view on the perspective view to the side of this grid because we want to see the object without interfering by having those image plane interfere. So make sure you clean out, clear the area of modeling right there. Save your file. I'll give you five minutes to get this ready. Okay. 
look like this at the moment. Okay. Pardon? How do you get rid of the ones? Um, you mean this one? Oh, can you just select them? Yep, you can select and delete them, or you can keep. We, I'm gonna keep them, and uh, I'll show it to you. Two more minutes. Did we hit view image to get the, the image and the source? Yes, you go to view menu, okay, that's what and then image plan. Make sure you are on font view to add font image, okay. and site view add site image. Don't put into the wrong view. It causes problem. Okay, are you guys ready? How many of you need more time? Okay. Now, we need to dim the image visibility because it's so bright. It's so hard to look at things. Um, you select one image, any one of it, and look at channel box right here, this button, the far right on the top. Channel box. Select the image. Look at under shape node. These are uh, translate node, shape node. Under shape node, you have alpha gain. You can reduce them. That's a opacity. If I do 0.5, can you see it dimmer? How about 0.2? I think point, point 0.1 even okay. Make it darker. Same thing as the side view. 0.1. Because we, are, we just want to see, but not too much to interfere. Now, um, we're going to put all of these in one layer. So first, select a, uh, the distance object. And look at under display on your channel box, layer, select layers create layer form selected so that is assign the selection inside that layer right away once again select the object and create layer form selected and it's inside there and we can call a reference layer i'm going to put refer shorter name quicker and click save now if i turn it off can you see it's high, that selection? Okay. We can do the same with this image plane, add into that layer. So do you guys still remember how to use the layer, display layers? V is visible. P, these are preview for animation. We don't use it at all for this semester, so don't worry about that. But this one though, the third one, the third square, when you press one, it's become T. T is a referencing. Referencing is allow you to see the object inside that layer, but only in wireframe mode. You can't touch it. It just display there. If you click to cycle one more time, you get reference. The R stands for referencing. Referencing is show wireframe with shade. If you turn on shade, oh, oh no, sorry. It shows shared. If you turn on wireframe on shared, will also sh show wireframe. And it's black color. If you cycle one more time, it's become normal layers again. So now I'm going to select both image plane and add. Right click and choose add selected object into ref refer layer. Now if you hide it, everything hidden. So now, what if 
you don't want to see just only this object. Well, you can separate the layers or you can choose only particular view to hide the image plane. Under show menu on perspective view, if you look, and there's a check mark in front of image plane. Shortcut is Alt plus four. So you can hide image plane quickly. Okay. So now I'm gonna do Alt four again. This time though, if I turn these off, they're all gone, right? So because of, because of this is higher hierarchy. Whatever is hierarchy does, the children will do the same. So this is a little drawback, right? Now, what you can do though, you instead you can go to show and disable a locator and dimension tool. So locator, um, mm -mm -mm -mm. where is the locator? Right here, locator. And then dimension two, right here, dimensions, it's gone. So now when you hide this layer, you hide all of them. So you can keep it. Either way, you can do the opposite way, that's fine too. Okay. So all right. Now, can you see when I do that, each individual layer has its own display option. Oh no, viewport has its own different different option. So I'm gonna have to do dimension high. Now some of you might well sorry, why don't we just use the display menu? Yes, you can. Either way, I just want to show you how uh, more option to work with. Here we go. Okay. So. Now, we're going to start it to blocking out. Based on the shape, we have a lot of primitive object that we can start with. Now, we are not going to build all of these at once. We're going to separate them. We're going to build only this section to here, and these are separate, and then we're going to combine them together. So, based on the look, I could see that we can start it with cylindrical. So let's create a cylindrical under create menu, polygon primitive, cylindrical. Shortcut is under polygon model tab, modeling tab on the shelf. So slender, here we go, cylindrical. And just move it first. Here we go. Might be a good time to change the pivot point. So to do this, let's do whole X key again and let it snap to the center of the grid. Can you see right here, it's grid, any grid. The reason is because by default is unit at one on height. So now, is it one, two, sorry, two. So now it's two span, right, two grid. We can change the pivot, pivot point, press D, and let it snap to right there. Hold X key again, snap, here we go. And press D to get off the uh, pivot mode. At this point, now we could do this. We can hold X key and move, here we go, right around there, okay. And we're gonna scale it. But before we, well, we can scale it. You can also use the radius, but the radius, when you do it, it started, can you see, in height. It started from the center outward, so it means your pivot point is, you lose that pivot point again, right, if you use a height. So, so this time we're going to scale them. There we go. And get the base to match. There we go. Now, our reference are not lined up on the center perfectly. So no big deal, let's grab that and move a little bit. I use middle mouse to drag, oops, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna highlight, translate X. 
and zoom in a little so that we can see right here. Middle mouse, click, make sure you highlight X first. Can you see I highlight the attribute X? This is how you move, another way to move things. We're going to constrain to the translate X. Use middle mouse button and then slide it and just eyeballing it. I think that's about right. Here we go. So now I can go back and scale a little more. Make sure when you scale, scale uniformly by grabbing the center. Let's go back and check first. Some of you might accidentally scale only one side. This incorrect or that shape incorrect. It has to be uniform. If it's not uniform, just keep undo. Okay. So now I'm going to scale a little more. Here we go. As much as you can. Well, my uh, view, my image plane is still not matched. So I'm going to. Uh, that's about right. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. Here we go. So it looked like this at the moment. Okay. Now, I'll wait a little bit. When you're ready, scale only one axis on Y axis. So that is short. And I just want to shorten like that. That's it. That's all I need. Okay. And it should look like this at the moment. So we block it out. Okay. And um, now, this section, I am not doing it yet because it's easier to do it after to extend them. First thing I need you to do, I like you to go to input of the cylindrical, the cylinder object. And under subdivision cap, I want you to add two. There's a reason. Because later on, we will cut the hole on this. Let me do. I want to show you the reference image again. Right here. See, we want a space so that we can add another surface right there. So that's why we wanted to create a uh, cap on the top. So, and how big the cap we want though, we want it to be the length is similar to that part. That's all we need, but don't do it yet. We can leave it there for now, for now because we still wanted to increase the resolution. Now in this case, can you see the curve? Obviously, I think we need one, two, three, four. Let's do four. Let's follow this grid. Just use the grid to help. So under division height, increase it. I'm going to hold middle mouse, highlight the division. You can type it in, but this is another way. Select the subdivision highlight, middle mouse and increase to let's see one two guys let's do one more i think so that i just afraid if we do too much it won't look nice uh too much geometry too much work to do so let me think how about this one two three no let's do that four Four division. Okay, four division. Now, this time we're done. We are not going to touch any resolution right here. Um, the reason that I mentioned that we don't want to mo uh, modify the uh, component yet because if we do, we are not able to change any volumes on the uh, initial uh, property because it will distort all the shape. So you need to not touch the component yet. Now, do you, how many of you um, don't remember already how to molding 
the geometry with the component. Anybody, people who are online, are you doing okay? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Okay, so now, right click and choose a loop. Double click on this loop. If, if it doesn't select the whole loop, just hold shift and select. So like what I mentioned it from last section, there we go. Now, turn on scale two. We're gonna scale uniformly, but in only this plane. So it's Y plane. Can you see that one? See that? Uniform only two axes. Now, what we need to do though, we need to figure it out where it is. Okay, so scale it uniformly. I scale on perspective, but I try to look at right here. If you can't see it, you might have to, let's see. Well, how about we come back and scale that later? We scale the other part first because I can't see. So now, this section, double click on edge loop and do not scale on a front or side view. You scale on top view. Let me change to here. You want it to scale uniformly only to axis, Z and S. So Z and F is the Y plane right there. Can you see that plane? Click on it and scale. And then watch on the side view or the front view, wherever you see the, I watch on the front view. Can you see? Here we go. That's it. So now select the next one on the top, scale the same way, and watch on the front view, but scale on the perspective so that you can grab those two axes. There we go. And keep going. Hey guys, I apologize. I totally forgot. We forgot to count the span. Hold on, undo. <laughs> Sorry guys, we're gonna have to do that again. Undo, don't scale anything yet. Component, go back to the component. We need to count this. I forgot the number of the exit division. Remember we got a span, right? We want that a span. So one, let, let me, Go back to the image again. Here we go. One, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is it eight or nine? Yes, eight. So eight plus in between. So that will be 16, at least 16. So let's start off with 16 first. Here we go, 16. Now, we need to think about the resolution inside that 16, okay. So right now when you look, we need this span to line up right here. You could rotate, okay? So let's see rotate how much. The, the reason that we want to rotate because we want one flat line up. So right now my, let's try 10. I don't think 10 is correct. Let's look at on the top view. Can you see? You need to check this line. Check this line. So that's 10 is incorrect because it's not straight line. Let me switch to wireframe mode. Press four. So let's try 12. No, 11.5, I guess. Yes. Can you see? Almost straight line. Not quite. Still. Let's try 0.55, no, 11.525, no, how about 11.45, no, getting worse, <laughs> hold on, we want a straight line, 11.5, what, what number is it? 
point two one. Yeah. That's the least one it is for me. Oh. Hey guys, let's try eleven point two. Oh okay, eleven point two one. Not quite. How about two two five? Two two. Okay, that makes sense. Here we go. Eleven point two two guys. You get a flat line. So now can you see it's match? This is great. Okay. So I think sixteen. Here we go. All right. So now we're gonna scale this. You can start it to scale. Let's save, scale it again, edge. I'm gonna start it from this one. Make sure you scale uniformly, only on Z and X. Oh. And keep going. All right, so the last loop, okay, now the last loop, it looked like this at the moment. I'm gonna scale it, here we go. And it's really hard to see. It's okay, just scale some point. Oh, actually, guys, we don't really need the last loop at all. So just scale it small. You know what? Let's do this. Scale it like this. And then choose phase. Move the... Okay, and you can move to, can you see? It just, let's get to that part like this. For now, here we go. And can you press three to see if it curve? That's good, here we go. And now, when you press three, can you see this section become rounded? on the bottom. We can stop that, go back to one. Under edit mesh, you can do a uh, split, multi-cut tool. Now, um, hey. Mesh, tools. mesh tool, thank you. Uh, multi-cut tool. I used the uh, shortcut until I forgot. You can do insert loop, multi-cut tool. Now, now guys, um, if you select the object, I'm gonna go to edge. Hold shift key and right mouse click. You access a shortcut menu. I've been using this until I forgot where it was in the main command. Multi-cut tool. Now, you can use insert edge loop However, multi-cut can do similar. Let's do multi-cut. I want to show you. If you hold control key and then you just move your cursor over one edge, any direction, it will show preview of the loop. So I'm gonna choose it right here, a little close to the edge on the bottom, and hold and click with left mouse to insert. Now when you press three, can you see? It's become a little straight line. If you want more, you can insert again, or I can press back to one. Look at under. Now we're gonna extrude this later, so we can try. Can you see? I can scale this a little closer, and I scale only uh, Z and X. Now it's a press three. Can you see now it look like really straight on the bottom? Here we go. And on this section, don't worry about that yet because we have to add more stuff. So now, 
I'm going to come back to here. Press 1. Okay. So let's move this up a little bit so that we can get the shape. Like, just use these to line up with that. Um, we still going to. Yes. Did you have the edge loop in the bottom? Yeah. You just use, um, if you hold shift key, right mouse click, choose multi cut, right. and then hold control key to add. And then, can you move one loop on the bottom? Okay, so you place it on the bottom and not on the side? No, on the side first. And then on the bottom, we have this, it looks like this, the original. Uh, okay. So we just scale it up. Now, on the bottom, this, I just made you do that, but later on, we're going to have to extrude all of them. So we're going to have to eliminate that part, but we don't do it yet. So now, in this case, I could see a little things here. I'm going to change this direction a little bit. Can you, here we go. And I'm going to scale it uniformly. Let's change direction a little bit so that they kind of a, a little more uniform look. I don't like one side to be uh, to be too tight. Go ahead. Yes. Trying to match the curvature to three or to one. To the image. Okay. Oh, I just Say it again. Um, when you go to three and you go one, are we trying to get the curvature to line up with three, or are we trying to get it to line up with one? Oh, one, 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 one. Yes. Three will be by we want one to be the original. Okay. okay. This can be a little bigger. Okay. So now <clears throat> this area, we can stop continuity. Multi cut. One more here. I think I'm going to do right there first. And then press 3 to see how it look. Press 1 back. So we will need more subdivision later. How about do one more here? Press 3. Okay, that's good enough for now. We don't want to add too much yet. Okay, so now <clears throat> we're going to create an indent based on this. I'm going to select, switch, and choose phase. One, two, three, four. Like that. Let's look at on the uh, reference again. So it's really close to there. That's good. And can you do like this? Make sure you select the bottom also like this. Go ahead, select and skip. Skip one column. Oh, hey guys, I forgot. You need to do this section also. Because otherwise, it will create too much smooth on top. We're going to do them at once because it's kind of uniform look. Here we go. Hey guys, on the top, don't select go over. If you do, you have to edit them later, so don't do that. This is enough. If I switch to four, we'll look like this. So eight of them. and. This is on the side. I'll give you a few minutes. Okay. So on my side view, I need to adjust the uh, image plane. I forgot about that because I focus on the font view. Okay. See, Im the side image kind of offset. We fixed that. So it looked like this at the moment. I'm going to press full. Here we go. Look like this. Now, we're going to extrude it. So, extrude to create a little 
water, and then we're going to extrude inward. So hold shift key. Now extrude is under edit mesh and extrude. So let's do shift key. With right mouse click, you choose extrude phrase. There we go. Now, these are manipulator. Okay. There will be a time though that you will forget. Like you extrude and somehow you click, it's gone. You're gonna extrude them again. Don't do that. That because if you go to object mode, there's already extrude phase one. Okay. Can, can you deselect them and do like mine? Because I want you to be able to get it back. So now, if you highlight poly extrude one, and look at on the left side, this is manipulator. Turn it on; it will come back. But in the outside, uh, in the object mode, you can right click and choose face. And when you do that, it will lose the handle. Can you see? So I have to be object mode, highlight the extrude. If you don't highlight the extrude, let me highlight something else. When you turn on manipulator, oh, this version still show you the top manipulator. So never mind. In the past, you won't see it. So just highlight one of this, one of the uh, input. Now, let's talk about the manipulator, extrude manipulator. So there is a switch. The switch is allow you to switch to local or the object mode, or to local or, or normal mode. So local is right there, center local. Normal is on the normal of your phases that you extrude. So today, at this point, we want them to be on the surface, each surface. We add section, right? Now, you have a scale to scale the extrusion normal phase. You have translate, same as the standard, but it's not the standard. This will manipulate it based on the switch. Switch is on the, uh, on the uh, normal. So if I do like this, can you see? It's scale on X of the normal of that phase. And if you look at on my top view, let me undo. When I scale it, can you see? It's follow the normal orientation of the phase. There we go. So now, if you want all of them to be evenly distributed, shrink both X and Y. Let's see. You do offset. You could try to do manually like this. It's fine too, but we have offset. Let's do offset so that you do only one volume right there. So offset, you can try 0.1. Don't do too much yet, just a little bit of it. 0.2, see if it's right. I think I gotta just do 0.2 because if you look at on the reference again, they are, n oh, actually, there has a lot of uh, slope there, can you see? So it's not too sharp, let's do 0.25. We can kind of go back later. As long as we don't delete history yet. So now we get to that point, we're gonna start it to push in, but we can't push it right now. We need extra surface. So we have to add it to add it. So extrude one more time. Right click and choose phase. And this time you're going to select only the phase inside there. Here we go. Including this one. Here we go. Like that. All the way. There we go. Now, you can do like this, guys. Can you look at on my screen quick? I hold control key and shift to add that selection, control and shift. And then I'm going to do control and shift here, double click on it, and it's like the whole in between. Yes, go ahead. Um, my extrude anchor point is like really tilted and like diagonal. 
Oh, you might, hold on, let me go back. Um, when you go to here, make sure your switch is on normal, not on world space. Switch it back to normal and use offset. Okay. Can you see my offset is 0.25? Try offset, see if it works. Is it okay now? Uh, no. Okay, so guys, go ahead, select all of that and extrude again. And then, wait for me. Oh, oh because, oh, can you undo? Because you didn't scale correctly yet. Okay. Keep undo, undo, extrude. Grab the bottom part and scale it so that they are the same size the the, near the edge. Oh, you did not extrude, so you have to select them. Yeah. Oh, you forgot to extrude first. There's no extrude on there. So you have to go back and say, just keep undo until you get those selection back. Unless you did not finish the selection. I mean, no, no, I don't okay. know. So select them. Just use, hey guys, um, people who are online too, when you do selection, use selection too. Don't use move, rotate, or scale to select it. It's just because you can accidentally scale them or move them or rotate them by accident. So use selection two. Shortcut is Q. Q is selection two. W is move. R is rotate. Uh, yes, E is rotate. R is scale. So I'll wait a little bit for people to catch up at the meantime. Hey, what did I do with this one? Why it looks different? One moment, let me. Oh, hey guys, when I extrude, I extrude the wrong selection. Can you see I'm missing one? So I have to undo that. I'm missing one face. Let me check. It's really hard to make a mistake. Uh, it's really easy to make mistake. So I keep undo because one, one of them are looks different because I forgot to select this face. Okay, so now can you watch me again, people who get lost? After I select it, hold shift, right mouse click, and choose extrude face. And now, the default manipulator is the one we want. We want it not to be like this. It has to be on the normal face. So now we just change the offset to point 0.2. Now your model, if it's smaller than mine, you might have to do point 0.1, 5, point 0.3, it depends. So now this is the correct one. Okay. And now in the future, if you know, uh, last demo, I just deselect, right? If you are still selected, you could just keep that selection and add another extrude. So if I hold shift key, for people who follow my first demo, just selecting. Well, let me do selecting. Okay, select. So select all the face inside there. And then extrude again one more time. But this time I want you to push into C direction. Right here. Push it in. You might need to press 3 to see the preview so that you know how deep you want it to push in. There we go. So I think, let me look at on the photo again. Yep, that's deep enough. 
Maybe a little more. Here we go. Okay. Press one back, it looks like this. If you wanted to create a, a little more angle on the edge, can you see right there? What you need to do is after you push, you add offset 0 0.05. Press 3 to see it. If it look right, oh, I do it too much right here. 0 0.05. We might have to do 0 0.1. And then uh, active on the viewport. Press 3. Now, now, there's something different. I think we have too much stopping motion there, uh, stopping continuity. So we might have to remove one of these and that one too. Let me try. Shift, delete, edge. Okay, guys, we have to remove some of them on the line right there. You know what? We can slide them. Don't, remo don't remove because I don't want you to get confused. Okay. So, I'm going to wait until you get this shape. Okay. Are you guys doing okay? Oh, I'll go look. I think you might offset too much. L let me go look. Okay, I'm going to press one back. Look like this. Okay. Let me pause this video quick. Okay, uh, while we're waiting, i got to move my site image plan forward because they are not light up. Here we go. Okay. So it's light up now. Now, one thing. When we are working on polygon model, I'm going to press 5 to show shading. It's a good idea to turn on wireframe on shade on each viewport. Right here, this button. Wireframe on shade on each viewport. The reason is so that we can see the wireframe while we on smooth and shared all. Okay. Now, these are a shortcut under shading. Wireframe on shaded. That's the shortcut. And keyboard shortcut is Alt plus 5. The, bottle, uh, the button is right here. This is smooth. This is wireframe. This is smooth and shared. Oh, wireframe and shared all. Wireframe on shared. Sorry. Okay. Now, the other thing I want you to do is I personally, I like to turn on polycal. Display menu. Heads up display. Polycal. The reason is if we need to count the number of the selection, for example, can you see? Four selected phases component. There we go. Now, the first column is indicate, let me expand this. First column indicate a type of component. Okay. Second column is the entire scene number of component. Right now they are matched because we have single object. If you have multiple object, you will need to look at on the third column for the selected component object, for the object of this component. And this is indicate how and what component are selected. Okay, so now we need to make a little adjustment here because Based on when you press 3, can you see it's too tight right there? We can fix this, not too hard. If you move one line right here, if I double click on it, I'm going to switch to a um, smooth and shade, oh uh, no, number 3. 
you don't want to move like this. Because when you move like that, it's changing the line. Oh, these are straight lines, so it's okay, but let's pretend it's not straight. Okay, so I want you to do this. Select the whole loop. If you can't select the whole loop, use selection tool and keep shift select until you get the whole loop. And it's right here, this loop. That's it. Now, shift, right mouse click, and choose slide edge tool. What this tool does is, is allow you to slide the edge along the normal of that face. So it mean if you do it right here, it will follow that angle. So this will be better when you reposition the wireframe. So press 3. And with the slide edge tool, you need to use middle mouse. See when you choose say drag with MMB, middle mouse button, then you just drag it. And just try to make it round, similar to the uh, reference. You might need to go back and look at your reference a little bit. There we go. So it's kind of really round there, you see? Okay, so I might have to move it a little more. Here we go. Now, same thing as on the top, this one, slide it down. There we go. And if you be picky a little bit, you might want to slide this second one too, so that you kind of average and then the uh, span, so that a little more uniform. You don't have to, but you can. There we go. Okay. It looked like this. If I press one, here we go. So now I can see that this is kind of unnecessary subdivision. Can you see right there? We should remove it. So what I'm trying to show you is it's kind of problem solving. And um, you can keep it there because if you press three, it looks okay, so keep it. But let's be picky. We want the span to be e to kind of uniform. When it's uniform, it makes the, uh, the continuity of the surface are better. So delete it, shift right mouse, click, delete. Here we go. Now press three again, see if how it looks. And don't worry about the matching, it's good for now. Okay. So next thing we're gonna do is press back to one, Let's take a look at the reference one more time with side cap. Here we go. I'm going to zoom this a little bit. Now, we're going to add this. A really sharp cut and indents in. Actually, the real object, these can be unschooled. So it's like a bowl, a huge bowl. These are thread connected to there. And if you look at this image, not that one. I thought I have one somewhere. Yeah, I don't have it here. Never mind. Okay, so now let's build that shape. We got that correct. Let's press four so that we can see it. So I think this part is a little high. Can you see? I'm gonna double click if double click a slope if it doesn't select no big deal you can select face select that shift double click here we go and actually I wanted to move the whole thing though right there can you see it has to be lower so um, let's select this also sorry my bad here we go shift let me go to, here we are. Okay. You select one, shift double click, here we go. And then select the rest. This one, they are not connect, so you're going to have to select that manually. 
Let's move this down a little bit. Make sure you select all the way. If you press four, you can see better if it's all the way. And press five back. Now move it down a little. Turn on move to. Here we go. All right. So press three again to see. This is right. Okay. A little off, smaller, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Just a little tiny bit. So now, press one back. And look at on the line. It's cut. Let me see how many cut. Oh, just one cut. Okay, good. Somehow I thought it was another cut here. So this is the cut. So before we cut, let's make this straight line a little bit. S select all of the vertices on top because we wanted to make them equal flat surface and turn on scale 2 and you can scale uniform this time because it's only single plane when you scale uniform it will be a single plane now I make a little mistake here can you see on the top it's not straight line no big deal you can scale one direction on y axis can you see right this it's become straight line. Can you see? Let me undo again. Right here. When it scale like this, it's create a straight line on the top. Now, why it does that though? Because it's uniformly selection. When you scale this direction, it's y. It's literally move each point, squish it to y direction so that they line up in a single plane. Okay. And the reason that I do that, make this straight line, because later on we're going to scale it down, but not yet. I want you to insert another loop right here. I want you to pick the line. First loop, you can start it from the bottom. One. Second loop. Two. Here we go. They might be too spread out. My... I think it's dust too spread out because look at on the photograph, it's really tiny. Can you see? Like really tiny. So let's scale it down. Not scale, just move the uh, edges. Double click on it. Turn on move to and make it closer. There we go. So it looked like this. Really close. And if it's too big, later on we can shrink all of them together at once. Okay. So now, I want you to select this face. Loop. Here we go. I'll give you a few minutes. Insert to loop. And then select the face. Loop of the face. That in between those two edge Loop. And you're going to extrude it. And then push inward. That's all you need to do. Shift, right mouse click, extrude. Now push inward. You want it to push on Z direction. Inward, like that. And how deep? It's up to you. Because it's kind of mimic that it has separation to object. Here we go. But just push in. Don't scale them. Do nothing. Just push in on Z direction. But look like this. Now, if the gap are too high, we can move everything down later. So can you press three? It will look like this. Not perfect yet because we have to stop continuity. Do you guys remember? Insert extra loop to stop that. Press one back. Go to edge. And let me go to perspective so that you can see what I am about to do. Can you look at my screen quick? And then I'll let you do it. So you will insert the loop. Oh, let's go to object mode. Right click, edge. Insert the loop, hold shift, right mouse. Sorry, guys. Um, I will have to go back to the object mode again and turn on move to, uh, selection two. It doesn't allow me to access shortcut. 
m u l t i c a r d hold control key and then you stop the continuity right there one and two we need two line extra when I press three can you see it stop press one back I have to do all four section so right here too zoom in control click multi cut to control click just watch for a moment and then I'll let you do it here we go and if the spacing uh, doesn't look good you can use slide edge too like for example let's say I don't like that it's too too close I double click on it shift right mouse click choose slide edge and then middle mouse drag to slide it okay so I'm not going to do it now I'm gonna go to object oops undo object mode press 3 it looked like this can you see here we go Save. now we got 20 minutes I think I'm gonna stop now on Friday though um, hey guys sorry this Friday let's do lecture half an hour I wanted to show you how to do on the top now can you work on the bottom same technique same technique and Friday I will look at it how you do it if you can't do it that's okay I'll show you how to do it on Friday so this Friday just only this Friday guys um, can you come at least at the beginning of the section and then you can leave later so now on the bottom let me talk a little bit on the bottom what you need to do is uh, you need to extrude everything here for now one just select the face or shift select using selection tool otherwise you're gonna move or extrude if you are on, uh, on the move to by accident so I'm gonna extrude it I'm gonna do it quick okay and then you do it on your own so I want that so I'm gonna just keep going down to here okay now I select this face extrude again and I'm gonna move only Z direction uh -oh. move here we go until it's expanded here we go and from here let's switch to four if you wanted to have a little bevel look you could insert edge loop scale or I'm gonna show you one more too double click on this edge just watch shift bevel here we go and now when you bevel you can change the fraction how big so 0.25 smaller can you see I get to some point now it's the same thing as insert is loop scale it down but this is, might be quicker so you got that part undo Oop. here we go so I got that one level now about this level it needs to be a little larger you can do it like this insert edge loop hold on select shift insert a uh, multi cut and then cut here I think I'm gonna do right around there okay and then you select the face here we go Oop. I want to select the whole loop here we go and you extrude a little bit more extrude and push it only C direction just a tiny bit here we go so you get that label and it's gonna be a bevel shape right so you could select the edge this time you can select top and bottom at once here we go bevel and you can increase or reduce the bevel size how about 0 0.75 here we go we get to that point now if I press 3 it looked like this and then you have to add detail the detail is basically same thing as what we did with the top part 
Okay, so I guess I'm gonna stop right here and um, let you have questions, and I will show the result on Friday. Okay, so just only this Friday, guys. I need you to participate it again because I want you to get the top part. Otherwise, we'll be too slow. And then I will talk about what you can do the rest of the Friday because on the bottom you get the technique already. You can do the exactly same thing on the bottom. Now, on the bottom though, we can build two sections, one here and the other one there, and then we connect them together. Or we can build one section but don't extrude them all the way. We talk about that. Okay, so that's it for today. I'm gonna stop the video and the video should be available maybe a few hours after should be two to three hours because uh, the um, Zoom will do a uh, what do you call that? Will render it by itself and then we'll send the link. But this one, the video that I record right here, for people on crowd, you'll be able to doubt, to get it right away because it will be inside class folder. So I'm gonna stop record now. Let me show you the result one more time. And I'll help people around the rest of the time. Oops. F, 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 F. Here we go. So this is the result of today work. All right. Now, hey guys, for today, um, I will not create the uh, in-class exercise submission yet. Okay, I will do it uh, on Monday. On Monday, basically, in-class exercise for this week, you're gonna have to screen cap this and put it inside uh, on the uh, discussion group. I will send out the email later. Okay, so this is for what we did today. Okay, let me save. Don't forget to save, guys. It's important. Okay. And I'm gonna back up my file to my D drive. Let me go to, I'm gonna copy the whole project data directory and go to my hard drive and override the old one. There we go. That's how I do it. And next section, we will rename this to version two. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the video now.